Welcome back to another video brought to you by ISCA Engineering. In today's video, we will be talking about three phase alternating current motors. We will cover different kinds such as the induction motor, synchronous motor, squirrel cage induction motor, and wound rotor induction motor. This video is a continuation in the motor control series. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos, I highly recommend watching those before continuing this video. Before we dive into the video, if you are not yet subscribed, then please hit the subscribe button, like the video, and leave a comment. Also hit the notification button so you won't miss any of the new videos uploaded. Let's get started. To understand AC motor operation, it is important to think about rotating magnetic fields, which are a key component to the operation of all AC motors. These magnetic fields follow the fundamentals of electromagnetism to rotate the shaft of the motor. When we apply a three-phase supply to the stator windings, a rotating magnetic field is produced which causes the rotor to turn at a speed that is dependent on the speed of the rotating magnetic field. The AC induction motor, or also referred to as asynchronous motor, is by far the most commonly used motor. In these motors, there are no electrical connections between the stationary and rotating windings. They obtain electric current by electromagnetic induction from the rotating magnetic field of the stator winding. These motors have only one moving part, the rotor, which makes them longer lasting, quieter, and lower in cost. Most modern induction motors have a rotor in the form of a squirrel cage, but can also be found containing rotors made up of windings rather than a squirrel cage. The squirrel cage induction motor is one of the most commonly used motors, often used in several commercial and industrial applications. It gets its name because the rotor inside of it looks like a squirrel cage. When voltage is applied to the stator windings, a rotating magnetic field is produced. The rotating magnetic field induces a voltage in the rotor windings, which causes currents to flow in the rotor bars. The rotor currents produce their own magnetic field and this interacts with the stator magnetic field to produce a torque. These types of motors can be found in applications such as centrifugal pumps, large blowers, lathes, and many more. The wound rotor induction motor, or also sometimes referred to as slip ring motor, is a variation of the start induction motor, designed to provide high starting torque for loads with high inertia. These motors are the same as the typical induction motor, except that the rotor has three phase winding, with each of the winding terminals connected to separate slip rings. The rotor slip rings connect to startup resistors in order to provide current and speed control on startup. It is normally started with full external resistance in the rotor circuit that is gradually reduced to zero. The result is a very high starting torque from zero speed to full speed at a relatively low starting current. The three-phase synchronous motor runs at a constant speed from no load to full load in synchrony with the line frequency. When a three-phase voltage is applied to the stator windings, a rotating magnetic field is produced. DC voltage is then applied to the rotor windings and a second magnetic field is produced. The rotor then acts like a magnet and is attracted by the rotating magnetic field. The result of this exerts a torque on the rotor and causes it to rotate at the synchronous speed of the rotating stator field. Since the rotor does not require the magnetic induction from the stator field for its excitation, the motor has zero slip compared to the induction motor, which requires slip in order to produce torque. Synchronous motors are not self-starting and therefore require a method of bringing the rotor up to near synchronous speed before the rotor DC power is applied. There are two basic ways of providing excitation current to the motor. One way is to use an external DC source with current supplied to the windings through slip rings. The other way is to have the exciter mounted on the common shaft of the motor in order to not use any slip rings or brushes. This concludes the video over three phase AC motors. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave it in the comments section below. In the next video, we will be looking at single phase AC motors. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at ISCA underscore engineering underscore. The links will be provided in the description. There we post content on electricity, controls, automation, and much more. Thank you for watching. 
See you in the next video.